Today I want to talk about voltage stability in a power grid. The power system stability consists of three distinct criteria which are however strongly interconnected. These criteria are first voltage stability, frequency stability and angular stability. In order to explain the concept of uh, voltage stability, I have uh, simplified a reality model here. Uh, here we have on the left side, we have a power generation plant, then we have a transmission line. It may be several tens or even several hundred kilometers long. And then we have a load. A load could be a city, a village, whatever. And uh, I have built a very simplified elec electric model uh, where we have here a power source. This is a voltage source. Then we have a, a reactance, which is uh, modeling the transmission line. And then we have a load, which is a resistance. For the power line, uh, we normally have an inductance of around about one microhenry per meter. It's a little bit less, but we will use that for our model. Now, the voltage stability in a power system is strongly related to the reactive power required to build up the oscillating magnetic fields of the power lines from the generation point to the loads. So these lines, they require reactive power. And this reactive power is uh, the issue we get uh, with the load and with the stability at the load. We see here this red curve is a typical stability curve. What this curve tells us is that uh, the higher the load is, that means the lower the resistance will be here, the more power I will push through my system from the generation point to the load. The higher uh, pa the power requirement at the load is, the higher the current will be through the power lines and the higher the current is through the power lines, the higher the voltage, the voltage drop will be through because of the power lines. And this is exactly what we see here. The higher the power uh, requirement is at the load, the more current will be fed through the power lines, the more the higher the voltage drop will be along the power lines until I reach a certain tipping point where I can just not push enough power through the line and then the voltage of the system collapses. A voltage collapse of the system means that at the end of the day, the, the speed of the power generator is not any more controllable and uh, it, accelerates, it, accelerates, it accelerates uncontrolled. Let's now have a look at uh, how this happens in reality. So let's now push more and more power from the generation point to the load and let's see what happens. So at the beginning, when the power requirement of the load is relatively low, I still have a, at the load the full voltage, but I have a relatively small current through the line. Therefore, there is no voltage drop along the line. So I'm in a very, very stable uh, condition. Now, the more power I uh, require at the load, we see that the phase angle between the voltage at the generation point and the voltage at the load uh, starts to, to move. So the phase angle is increasing. At the same time, I have more and more current flowing through uh, the impedance of the line. And uh, I have an increasing voltage drop along the line because of the current which is increasing and therefore my point, my voltage point at the load starts to decrease slightly, but I have also more power. That's what I want at the end of the day. So I need more power. You see the phase angle starts to be bigger. I reduce my resistance, of course, to increase the load and my voltage point, uh, voltage power point starts to, uh, to move. It moves until it starts to be relatively close to the tipping point. So I would be in reality, I would now be in a very critical condition. That would be a highly alarming case now already. If I move even further and even further, I see that the whole thing starts now to oscillate. It is not stable anymore. And it's enough to have a small little disturbance. And then the whole thing collapses. The generator accelerates. What we would have achieved now is a total blackout and uh, 
the risk that the generator or whatever other equipment uh, fails uh, or breaks is, is pretty high. Therefore, in reality, any system operator will do whatever is possible to avoid such a critical condition. If I go now to the simulator, this looks as follows. You recognize the circuit. You see now I have a very small load. You see the current is small. And uh, you see that the voltage at both ends are relatively in sync. Now I start to increase the power requirement and you see that the system frequency is slowing down. Therefore, I have to increase the torque of my system so that the generator stays kind of in sync. Then I can again increase the load so that... And now you see very well how the voltage at the end of the line and at the beginning of the line starts to deviate. I again have to push more power, otherwise my system slows down. I push more and more power. And then you see now I have basically, I'm very close to the tipping point. You will now see that uh, if I increase even more power, you see how the voltage is collapsing and then I lose the grip on the frequency. The generator goes out of tune. I cannot control it anymore. It was quite challenging to control my little simulator by hand. Normally the generator is controlled by very sophisticated control systems. Doing it by hand is, is quite tough. In the next movie I will show you what can be done to compensate the reactive power and to keep the grid voltage stable.